In this video, I'm going to add some server-side checks to make sure our client movements are valid. This could happen if the client has a bug, or if the client is modified in some way for cheating. We'll be checking to see if the client is flying through walls or if the clients are moving too fast, but these types of checks can be used to validate any kind of input coming in from the client. I'll be building off the Flybot project that I've created in previous videos. You can find a link for these down below, as well as a link for all the project files on GitHub. In the last video, we added an RPC call so the client could send the pawn's most recent transform to the server during every tick. It gets the transform from the collision component, which is the root component for the pawn. The server then updates the pawn's transform in its copy of the game, and then this gets sent down to all other clients. This would allow the client to move the pawn anywhere it wants in the world. To prevent this from happening, we'll add some validation checks. First, when we move the pawn, we'll add some code to do a sweep check. Before we were doing a teleport move, which means we move from the start to the end without checking anything in between. A sweep move checks to see if any objects are hit between the start and end. We start by saving a copy of the pawn's transform before we move it, in case we need to revert the move. We then create a hit result structure. This is passed into the move call to record any hits that occur during the move. We then move the pawn by calling set relative transform. We pass in the new transform from the client, true is a second argument, which means to do a sweep during the move, and then pass in a reference to the hit result structure. We then check the blocking hit property of the hit result structure to see if we hit anything, and if we do, we log a message. We then correct the client by calling a new RPC call and passing in the old transform. We'll also define the new client RPC function, which moves the pawn back to the corrected transform. In flybot player pawn.h, we'll declare this function as a U function. We'll pass in the client specifier so this is run on the client when called from the server. Note that this will only run on the client that controls the pawn, not all clients that are connected. We can make this one unreliable like the server RPC, because if this gets dropped for some reason, we'll just send another correction during the next attempted move. At the top of flybot player pawn.cpp, we also need to include flybot.h, which defines the flybot login category. Let's now build it and run the editor. Let's first check our play options to make sure we're running as a client. We'll also only run one client to make it easier to test. Let's now start up the client in a new window. In order to see the server output that's running in the background, we'll click on our output log tab. We'll bring our client window back and start flying around. As you can see, as we start bumping into the walls, the server's correcting our player transform. It's especially bad against large flat surfaces like the bottom of the room. This causes a lot of stuttering as we move because the client is moving us forward, but then the server moves us back. This shouldn't be happening because when the client processed the input and moved the pawn, it made sure it wasn't colliding with any objects in the new location. To figure out why this is happening, let's go back to the code we just added and add a breakpoint at the log line. When we run this under the debugger and bump into a wall, the breakpoint gets triggered. Let's go to the locals tab and look at the hit result structure. We tried moving about 80 units from the old transform to the new transform, mainly in the x and y direction. We barely moved it all in the z direction. Instead, we only moved about 7.5 units, putting us at the coordinates in the location property. It thinks we hit the floor collision box at this impact point, but this is much further down than what we're trying to move. After stepping through the collision detection code in the debugger for a while, it seems it's not exact. It's a very close approximation, but when testing for collisions a second time, it's possible to get a false positive when the shapes are right next to each other. This could be due to the collision check on the server, or it could be because of the location correction that happens on the client side after processing the user input. One way to fix this is instead of having the client send only the final transform to the server, it would also send the raw inputs, and the server could perform the same move using those raw input values. This should result in the client and server having the same final transform. This is what the character movement component class does if you're using the character class, but we can't use that here because we're using a basic pawn in the floating pawn movement component. We could duplicate this logic in our pawn and a custom movement component, but that would be quite a bit of extra code, especially when having to deal with various error conditions like when network packets are dropped. A simpler, and well, lazier way of doing this is to not correct the client right away and only correct the client after it hasn't had a safe move for a while. To see what this would look like, let's add some new logging code to see how often this would have to happen. We'll log the expected and corrected distance for every hit that we encounter, as well as add a log line for every successful move. When we test this in the editor, you can see most of the moves are fine, but we do get batches of hits when sliding along a surface. The client self-corrects eventually when it moves away from the surface, so it would be safe to ignore a few hits on the server. Back in the code, let's add some logic to only correct the client after a certain number of consecutive hits. We'll add a moves with hits variable that increases on every hit, 
it gets a reset to zero on a safe move, and if it's ever greater than our max allowed hits, then it sends a client correction. In flybot player pawn.h, we'll add these two new variables, and then in the pawn constructor, we'll set a default value of 30 max hits. When we test this, we can see there's still a few corrections being sent, but it's much smoother. Most of the hits end up resolving without any correction needed. Let's go back to the code and add a comment to explain what's going on. We'll also disable the noisy log line so our output log is a bit more quiet. Now when we test, we only see the corrections that are being sent back to the client. Keep in mind that the client and server will be slightly more out of sync, but they already were due to the client-side prediction that's happening. This difference should still be small enough so it's not too big of a deal for other gameplay logic. Now that we have a check in the server that makes sure the pawn isn't flying through walls, we're going to add another check that makes sure the pawn isn't flying too fast. To do this, we'll first calculate the distance that the pawn is trying to move on the server. We get this using the pawn's current location on the server and the new location sent from the client. Next, we calculate the speed by dividing the distance by the amount of time since the last tick. We'll log the speed and the amount of time that's passed to help us test the speed check. We'll then check if our calculated speed is greater than the max speed on our movement component. This is the same variable that limits the client movement as well. If it is too fast, we log it, tell the client to go back to the current position, and then ignore the client update. When we test this, we can see the new speed updates getting logged. When we fly at max speed, we start getting moving too fast messages and a bunch of stutters due to server corrections. If we look at the values in the log messages, you can see we're barely going over the max speed of 5000. This is due to slight variations in values while calculating the distance and speed on the server. To fix this, we'll allow a slightly faster speed on the server. 5%, or multiplying the max speed by 1.05, should be plenty to allow for variations between the client and server. When we test this, you can see we now move around smoothly without any speed corrections. Let's go back to the code and comment out the speed update line so the output log isn't so noisy. Now when we hit play and fly around, the client moves around smoothly and the output log is quiet. While this is running well in the editor, there is actually still one issue that's going to pop up once we start running the server and client in separate processes. Right now the client and server update at the same intervals since they're running in the same process. If they're running in separate processes, it's possible that the client could send two or more updates for the same server tick. Or the client may only send one update for every two or three server ticks. This is a problem because our speed calculation is using get delta seconds, which assumes that the client and server tick rates are the same. If they're not the same, the speed will appear faster or slower. In the next video, I'll show how to build and test clients and dedicated servers that run outside of the editor. I'll also demonstrate the speed calculation bug and show how to fix it. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.